The audio system in the Mustang is 25K. However, we didn't have anything to show people at lower price ranges. So that's exactly what I'm planning to do with my BMW M5. So I haven't bought any of the products just yet for the car and I thought I'd share the decision making process that I go through when specking a system, even on my own car. So my budget is between three and a half thousand to four and a half thousand, but we'll see where we end up. To choose the speakers, we need to know exactly what's in the M5 currently. What I'm gonna be doing is drawing out a little bit of a illustration, if you would, of the car and then explaining what's in the car currently. What we've got here is the front of the car, and now we come down, sides of the car, and the back of the car. We've got some very nice headlights at the front, and we've got the lights at the back. And we'll give it some windows. And on mine, mine's are quite a nice spec, so we've got a sunroof as well. So that's the front, and that's the back. As I mentioned before, I want to go down the route of a stock look setup. So we've got a tweeter, which sits on just on top of the door. Then inside the door, we've got a four inch component. Then there's actually no speakers in the rear doors at all. We've actually got ones in the rear parcel shelf, which are what's called a coaxial speaker. Then actually right underneath each seat, we have the under seat subs. That's the configuration. We've got a two way front end, coaxial rear and under seat subs. So now we know what to change. Let's dive into the internet and choose some speakers. The website you're seeing here is 4Car Audio. I use this when specking systems because it has products from some of the best manufacturers of car audio products. Audison, Hertz, you name it, it's all on here. We'll drop the link for this in the description below. So first off, we need to choose tweeters, so the higher frequencies and that clarity. So let's browse through some of the Audison products. So if we top on the first one, so these are actually the tweeters that I've got in the Mustang. A little bit on the expensive side, so they're around about a thousand pound for the set. What you'll see on the screen is your tweeter, four inch in the door, you've got your crossover there as well. And for the whole set, it's only 279 pounds, which is gonna help me fall into the budget that I need to be in. Tweeters and mid-range speakers are completed. Let's move on to car axles. So next we're gonna go for the rear speakers and we're gonna use this set here, which is what's called a coaxial speaker. So the tweeter is actually the same as what the front is and the four inch is the same as what's in the front. It's just combined together and giving you what's called a coaxial speaker. But again, tweeter as well as a mid-bass all in one. So next we need to choose those under seat woofers. These are actually priced individually. So it's 239 pound for each individual woofer. So you have got a spec one for left and right. So that's what we're gonna go for there. We have a little bit of a secret. This product isn't actually released yet and we don't know its price yet. So I think it's gonna be around about 1,300. So let's add that sum to the total. This is honestly a complete game changer. It's got new software, more power, and even more compact. We've got this going in to the car. We've got a chance to test it, the new software, as well as installing it and actually hearing the difference, which we'll show you later on in the video. So make sure you stay to the very end. So that's all the products chosen. Let's order it and wait till they arrive tomorrow. go. Check it. It's arrived. So let's unbox each one of these one by one. I need a knife. That's all the speakers unboxed. Now let's break down the total price. We paid 280 pounds for the front end, 250 pounds for the coaxial rear speakers, 480 pounds for both woofers, 1,300 pounds approximately for the amplifier and for soundproofing, cables, labor, and all those other bits and pieces, we've spent another 1,000 
450 pounds, which brings us to a grand total of 3,760 pounds. No sub? I know. I wanted to design the car for myself, and for the songs I listen to, the sub isn't really necessary. So the install is about halfway through. Let's go see what's being done. So Lewis is working on the M5. How are you, sir? Good morning. Good. What are you, what are you up to? Doing the subs which live under the seats. As you can see, it's a light for light replacement, which is a really, really cool bit of kit. It's gonna be going back under the passenger seat and it's gonna make for a really, really cool upgrade. Cool, and then these can go in the bin. So in terms of soundproofing then, obviously we've done the door. Um, so this is a three mil layer as a product. You've got some there, oh, wicked. Here's some of the stuff we've been using. Cool. So this is the layer that we're putting inside the door and this is gonna reduce road noise, but also build a better environment for my new sound system. So we're all finished, but we're not quite finished. I'm so excited. We've got one big final step to do, which is tuning the system. But before we crack on with that, I wanna show you what the system looks like. Best thing is you can't see it at all. So stock look, but all these speakers have been changed. There's a new tweeter, four inch, soundproof the door. I mean, this car now sounds incredibly solid. Fully soundproofed in here, fully soundproofed in the rear doors. But there's no speaker in the rear doors. We'll head over to the back shelf and you can actually see the actual speaker in that little corner just there. Moving on to the back, where's the power at? That is all down to the new amp that we've got installed. Again, brand new product, pretty cool. Underneath my floor, so I've still retained all my boot space here, is the wicked new Forza amplifier, processor, amplification, massive power, driving a whole new system. Plus, oh, shh, we forgot. Underneath the seats, right underneath here, we have those under seat subs, the 8 inch Audison Prima subs, hidden away, out of sight, but massive, massive power. So Steve is gonna connect up all the cables, power everything up for the first time, and I've got some interesting information to share with you when it's all ready. So everything has powered up and it seems to be working perfectly, but now it's time to tune the system, which is a very important part of getting a system sounding incredible. And we're joined by Steve. Hi there. So we've got a little setup here and we're gonna be guiding you through kind of what we do to set up a car. In front of me, I've got the RTA, which is gonna be analyzing the sound inside the car as it is. And then we've got the setup on Steve's computer, which is the brand new unreleased software. So we've got one microphone here and join us. We're gonna show you exactly what it does and how it works. You wanna go that side? I'll go this side. So this little bracket here is gonna go on the driver's seat and this is where the microphone will actually attach to. So this just clips on as part of the kit and slides on just there. That cable actually runs directly into the bitune box there. So Steve, what connector are you plugging that into? That's going into the uh, LMP, the microphone input. There's two inputs on the unit. We're just using the main multi-channel input to plug cool. in to listen to the sound in the car. Perfect. Right, so now what we're doing is turning the ignition on and then playing pink noise through the system. Pink noise? What on earth is that? For those of you who don't know, I've got a really good explanation. So just imagine one note being played, then two notes being played, and then all the notes being played. Now we have a problem. There's gaps between the notes. So let's play 20,000 notes all at the same time. And there we have it, pink noise. So we've got ignition on, and then what we're actually gonna do is level check the system. So what that means is Steve's gonna play pink noise to a certain level to kind of the maximum, kind of undistorted volume. And I'm gonna go onto the RTA machine here, which we've got hooked up to the level. So as you can see, it's quite low currently, and we're gonna bring it up to this kind of curve here. So. Whenever Steve's ready, we can, I'll give him the thumbs up. You ready? Cool. Bring it back down. So as the volume goes down and up, you can actually see on the graph. So Steve, if you just show, just turn it all the way down. As you can see, it drops down. And let's bring it back up. 
a bit more, a bit more, perfect. And that's the advantage of soundproofing. I don't know if you hear that on camera, but just listen to the difference. Now we can sit on the computers and analyze it all. From that graph, what are you kind of seeing, Steve? See, we're a little bit high on the treble on the far mm -hmm. right. Yep. And if we move into the center, kind of levels a little off. peak sort of just left of center, and there's a little dip around about 100, 125 hertz. Yep. That's in between where your mid bass and your mid sit separate. Yeah, and I think that's the thing on BMWs, isn't it? Because you haven't got a, like a six and a half inch. The door. There you go, yeah. from a four inch right down to an eight inch underneath the seat, you do get a little bit of that gap. So we're actually going to try and fill that gap. So, new software time. So this is obviously a completely different layout. Uh, Similar-ish to what we've seen before on the Audison Forza software. So first, we need to correct the response curve with EQ. To make it easier, let's open up paint. So imagine you have a straight line. That's pink noise. And now let's draw the response from the speakers. As you can see, it's not straight at all. So what you want to do is take a red color and bring in this little imperfection, this imperfection, and all of those rest of imperfections closer to that pink noise line. That's what we do with EQ. Take a frequency range and invert it to make a flat response. In the end, it took us around half an hour to finish the correction. So the correction is done. However, it's a little bit plain. We need to add a little bit of spice to it. So we're gonna jump in the car, play some songs, listen to it, and then go from there. Now we've got the EQ flat, the car sounds very German. <laughs> We need to make it sound a little more Italian. <laughs> yeah. So we increase the frequency, we increase the, the output to the maximum level, and we increase through the frequency range until you find a frequency where you, it creates an improvement in the sound you're listening okay, to. Okay, turn it up. And that's the one we choose to pick up. All right, start from, start from the bottom, and I'll give you a thumbs up as soon as I'm happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there. That's honk. That's honk. <laughs> See, I'm American. <laughs> so we've been tuning and tweaking it to my liking for another 30 minutes. As you can see, we boosted the lower end for more bass, then those highs sounded a bit too harsh for my liking, so we brought it down a little at around 3,400 hertz, but we kept the very highs for that clarity. Also, as you can see, we added gain at 700 to 1,500 hertz to bring in that presence and body in the song. So I hope you've enjoyed every part of today's video. We're all done for today. I'm gonna to go out for a little drive and you guys can now enjoy some awesome footage of Ruckus's FPV drone. See you on the next one.